Here we'll look at the data storage options that we can leverage in our mobile applications. And you have several great options to choose from. You know, first, we can store our data in application preferences. Now each of our mobile platforms, including iOS, Android, and Windows, all have dedicated APIs to access and manage user preferences. And this is great for simple key value pairs of data that you like to store within our app. Next, we can store files directly to the file system. So loose XML, binary data, text files, or even cache multimedia files are all great candidates. And we can utilize full relational database access with SQLite. Now, before choosing a strategy, it is important to think about the kinds of data you need to manage and then select the approach or approaches that best fit your data. Databases are great for relationships and filtering data, but they're more complex than simple flat files. And if you have a small amount of data that's fairly static, then a text or XML file might make more sense. Now in this section, we're going to explore storing data as preferences and directly to the file system. And we'll look at SQLite in detail in the next video. So first we have preferences. And all three platforms have this concept built in where we can store off simple bits of data and then retrieve it at any time in the future. And these are often used to store application preferences. And on some platforms, they can be exposed in a system specific fashion. So for example, iOS has a settings app where all app settings can be grouped together. Now we won't go into a lot of depth on this feature for the sake of time, but I wanna point out that you can either code directly to the platform's APIs, or you can use an abstraction layer to code the setting support once. We do this in a platform agnostic way and then have that library translate that to each platform. As an example, one of the Xamarin engineers built Xam plugin settings. This is an open source library. It's available from NuGet and it supports all of the Xamarin platforms as well as Windows Phone, Windows Store and UWP apps and it abstracts the native containers. So on iOS, that means NS user defaults, Android, that's shared preferences, and on the Windows side, we have isolated storage settings for Windows Phone and application data container for RT and UWP. Now keep in mind that abstractions like this will limit you to common types across these platforms. So in this case, the component supports storing intrinsic types with a string base key, and you can see that here on the slide. And we have our booleans, our integers, strings, doubles, decimals, and even date time. So let's see how we would use XAM plugins settings. Now first, it implements a singleton pattern. So we'll be working with the static current property on the cross settings class. And it provides a simple get set API that allows you to persistently store common types using a string key value. And then those values can be retrieved later by using the same key, even after the application has been shut down and restarted. Next, we can store data such as loose XML, binary or text directly to the device's file system. And our mobile devices in a lot of ways mirror their larger desktop cousins. Each one has a real file system that includes a hierarchical directory structure of folders and files, and we use it to load and save files from within our applications. Now the contents of that file system, so how it's structured and how much access you have to it from your application can vary, but the basic idea of creating, reading, and writing files is common across all the platforms. Now to work with files, you can use some old friends in the system IO namespace. And as an example, here we're opening a stream reader to read a file from our app folder. And in this case, we might be working with a text file, but we could use things like link to XML or XML documents or even write binary files here as well. And one important note, the classes shown here are available to the platform specific projects only not to the portable class libraries. And that means you'll have to put some architectural thought into your app if you wanna manage your file reading and writing from within a PCL. When deciding the file format to use, 
you should consider the type of data you're storing. You know, how big is it? What type of data is it? Does it have parent-child relationships? And these answers will lead you to an appropriate choice for representing that data. And you've got lots of options. I've talked about a few already. You can do binary through binary formatter or third-party formatters. You could use the lower level binary reader and writer to manage that format yourself. You could use XML via XML document or link. And you could handle text through stream reader, writer, or even file read all text. And then process the data as your business layer requires. Now, when you first work with files, there's a few places where they can go. Now, when your app is installed, it's placed in a specific location on the device. This location changes based on the OS, but the important thing here is there are APIs that you can use to read from your application package or bundle. This will let you access content that you ship with your application. But things here are read only. So to change them, you'll need to copy the data somewhere else. And that somewhere else is the application sandbox. The app sandbox is a private area for your app and by default, no other applications can access this area other than, of course, the operating system itself. Now, again, the structure and contents will vary by platform, but this is the location where you will place app-specific data files. And you can see an example of the iOS app sandbox right here. Notice it has several subfolders, documents, library, temp, and each of these have a specific purpose and Apple publishes guidelines on how to use them. What's important to note is that these are unique for your app. Each application on iOS has these same folders and things are similar on Android and Windows Phone as well. The vendor has certain expectations of what kinds of data you'll place in each folder. Now here are example folders for three of our platforms. App Home refers to the root of our application sandbox, and then each vendor recommends specific subfolders. On Android, we have the Files folder. iOS, we often use the Library folder. And on Windows Phone, we have Local. Now, these locations are common, but other options are available. So, for example, Android also has a Database folder. Now, since each platform has their own preferred locations for file storage, this forces the developer to configure a different database path in each of the platform-specific projects. So, to reach these locations, Xamarin uses the traditional desktop.net path lookup APIs and maps them appropriately for iOS and Android. And the special folder enumeration works with the system environment get folder path method, and that gives us the folder as a string. And Xamarin has implemented get folder path, so it's reasonable for both iOS and Android. Now on iOS, there's a couple of folders you might store files in. The personal maps to the documents folder, and this is where user generated data should go. As an example, Word for iOS would store local documents there. Now app generated data should go into the library folder, as you can see here. Now, Microsoft doesn't use this approach for Windows Phone, and using the get folder path will throw an exception. So for the Microsoft platforms, use the platform-specific APIs. For Windows Phone, you could retrieve the storage folder using the Windows Storage APIs.